The first thing I needed was a guitar. I found an advert where some guy was selling a Rickenbacker 330 for half the amount that than the original. I started recording guitars and after a while I realized that the sound wasn't exactly as I imagined. The sound wasn't as bright, it was too soft. Uh, then I remembered that the person who sold it to me mentioned that he slightly changed the setup on the pots and the condensers in the guitar's hardware. I printed out uh, the, the original diagram and went to ask my dad to help me fix it. That is some old Tesla condensers which changed the sound beyond recognition. He said afterwards that now he could actually hear the sound of the Beatles. It wasn't quite right before. I also found a short-term job in Prague and bought an Epiphone John Lennon signature electroacoustic guitar. The Beatles use it a lot in their records, connected through a Vox Combo. Another thing I needed was a guitar amp. I found out that the current Vox equipment doesn't play as well as the old ones did, because they are now made in China instead of England. I asked Pavel Horky to put together a technically exact copy of the Vox AC30 from 1964, which the Beatles used the most. I called it the Mercy Sound, which is the style of 60s Liverpool bands. To record the Beatles songs from the early era, it was important to place a microphone between two speakers. This is passe nowadays, everyone places it uh, directly in front of the speaker and it makes a big difference. Uh, from the early songs I used a second room microphone as well, which I placed 2-3 meters from the combo. Another challenge was the recording of a 12-string guitar. That was the feature of Hard Day's Night and For Zale albums. Of course, I don't have a 12-string Rickenbacker, so I had to record it with my 6-string guitar. My video of how to record the sound of a 12-string guitar with a 6-string one has been on YouTube for quite some time. But that's only for a bit strumming, not when one wants to play the wall song, uh, the wall chords. I had to think of an even better technique to achieve that. At first I played the track the normal way as with a six string guitar. And then into the second track I played exactly the same part again but with different strings. To do the second track I changed the strings on the guitar and used the extra ones that the 12 string one had opposite to the 6 string one. It made an interesting sound as all 6 strings uh, were thin.
There are two tracks of acoustic guitar in this song. One is connected through the combo and the other one in a classic way recorded through a microphone. I always imagined which member of the Beatles would play certain parts and whether they would sing. So I called it Lennon's guitar or Harrison's guitar. When I was recording Lennon's guitar, I often used uh, the same technique as Lennon did when he was recording songs during this era. Uh, together with Paul they sang into a microphone facing each other, with another microphone slightly lower recording uh, John's acoustic guitar. So a little bit of the acoustic uh, also penetrate into the vocal microphone. I didn't sing live, so I just mix it in with the main vocal. To record the acoustic, I used a microphone setup that was mostly used for John Lennon's acoustic parts during the early era. The song is based on the For Sale and Help albums. It's supported by three acoustic guitars. A nylon guitar, twelve string acoustic guitar, and John Lennon signature acoustic guitar. You can hear something similar in the song You've Got to Hide Your Love Away from the album Help. I also used my volume pedal uh, for the guitar's special parts, similar uh, to what George Harrison played in the song Yes It Is. For the refrain I recorded guitar chords played slightly differently than normal. I was inspired by the song Good Morning. Uh, you generally play the G chord like this. But I played it like this. It's a different sound. I also used the same microphone setup as the Beatles during the Sgt. Pepper session. The guitar was downtuned by one tone, 
same as McCartney's when he was recording yesterday. I play the song in D, but it's actually from C. Because I recorded the guitar and the vocals separately, I placed a microphone in front of my mouth as, a, as if I was singing and recorded the guitar with that microphone as well. Uh, then I mix it in with the lead vocal for it to have more space, as if I sang it live with a guitar. I can rely on you, oh my heart's been my burial. Glad for your time to spend with this mind, with this mind. Oh, I'm glad for your time to spend with this mind, with this mind. The guitar was followed by the bass. I looked forward to recording the bass the most as I've always enjoyed it. I recorded all the songs on my Harley Benton copy of the Wofner bass. Unfortunately, I didn't manage to find anyone who would lend me a Rickenbacker bass that Paul McCartney used for recording in the second half of the Beatles era. I recorded the bass using my Harley Benton combo and a AKG D30 microphone. One of my friends lent me an AKG D30 microphone the Beatles used an AKG D20, but it's almost the same. They used it for recording of bass drum and bass guitar. For songs based on Sgt. Pepper, I combined the sound from two microphones, the AKG D30 and a Neumann. The Beatles used this combination for the Sgt. Pepper session. They used slightly different uh, microphones, but the effect was similar. A ribbon or dynamic microphone near the combo and a condenser one further away. For two songs based on the Get Back and Abbey Road albums, I recorded the bass through the eye without the combo, same as Paul did uh, for the majority of songs back then. This means that you plug the bass directly into your audio interface or a mixer. The bass then plays from the monitors and headphones that are plugged into the computer. Mm -hmm. 